So you want to make Grizzle Brands and draw 14 cards in a turn and hit your opponent with 7-7 seven, seven Flying Life Linking Demons and you also want to play Legacy but you don't want to spend an absolute fortune to get into the format. There is a perception that Legacy is very expensive and there's probably a lot of truth behind that perception. Reserve list cards like Jewel Lands are fucking expensive and Wizards of the Coast don't seem to be doing anything to manage the cost of non reserve list cards like Fetch Lands for example. I absolutely adore Legacy, it is by far one of my favourite formats in all of Magic. The gameplay is complex and interesting, the decks are cool, it is kind of to me the very manifestation of what Magic should be. Much like other formats like modern and even standard, we have weaker periods, but on the whole the metagame is healthy because there's so much going on, there's so much variety that the metagame can even itself out. So when a deck becomes a menace, other decks can prey on it and fix it. In this video and other Legacy on a Budget videos, I'm going to talk about how the format can be affordable if you're willing to downtune the deck slightly. I'm going to show you powerful archetypes in Legacy that already exist, strong powerful decks that are real decks, real contenders within the format. And then I'm going to show you ways in which we can make them significantly cheaper for you to start playing into. From there I will show you the upgrade paths. I will also show you which cards fit into other strategies. And eventually, hopefully, this will help Legacy to shake off this image of being inaccessible when in reality it's just accessible to all other formats. So let's talk Legacy on a budget. This week's episode we're talking about Reanimator. We're going to bring Elish Norns and Ionas and primarily Grizzle Brands back to life and kill our opponents with them. On screen now is a conventional reanimated deck, often now referred to as Red Black Reanimator because Faithless Looting is one of the key cards that fuels the deck. It will set you back online around $200 but in paper $1.5 thousand dollars according to the MTG goldfish price. The game plan is to get a fatty into the bin, with that be a Chancellor of the Annex, Elish Norn, Ashen Rider, Grizzle Brand, and there's a few other ones you can play in your main board or sideboard depending on metagame as well, which we might come to later. Once it's in the graveyard, you're going to reanimate it with Reanimate, Exhum, or Animate Dead. How do we get these fatties in the graveyard? Well, there's a few ways really. Firstly, in the traditional sense, you use Faithless Looting to put the cards into the graveyard out of your hand. You can also Entomb. Entomb is by far and away a linchpin of the deck, one of the core cards of the deck, allowing you to tutor up and essentially combo out by putting a Grizzle Brand from your library into your graveyard and then reanimating it with one of your multiple reanimation spells. Beyond that, you can unmask yourself, you can Thought Seize yourself, or you can Cabal Therapy yourself to get a fatty in the bin as well. The rest of the deck is rounded out essentially with Lotus Petals and, and Dark Rituals, basically fast mana to be able to cast multiple spells in one turn and get a fatty out as early as possible. The Cabal Therapy, Thought Seizers and Unmasks also serve to disrupt your opponent's counter spell packages or their combos to either buy you time or to force through your own combo. That is Reanimator. Now as always the majority of the cost is in the mana base. My first way to reduce the cost of this deck was simply to replace the original jewels with shock lands. Now the reason the deck has the red splash is solely for faithless looting and beyond that there are green lands in this mana base, normally a bio or in the case of this budget version an overgrown tomb. This allows you to play things like assassin's trophy, return to nature and similar like the sideboard. I also switched out the two thought seasons for duresses. Now this makes our combo slightly weaker because we can't thought seize the cards out of our own hand into the bin but it does still do the same thing as disrupting the counter spells on our opponent's deck or dismantling spell based combo. But this was still $486, and that's not cheap enough in my opinion. I want a budget legacy deck to be on par with the price of a paper standard deck, and at least, you know, a fraction of the price of a modern deck. So we did a bit more tuning. We have cut down to being mono black. This means we can cut down the cost of the deck by cutting all fetch lands, or shock lands, all original duels. What this means though, in terms of power level, is that we lose faithless looting as one part of the depowering of the deck. Faithless Looting is a very good card at uh, lubricating the engine, shall we say, and we also lose a lot of sideboard options like Assassin's Trophy, which makes us a little bit more softer to Leyline of the Void. However, this deck comes in at a cool $300. At time of recording, that's actually cheaper than buying Jeskai Fires, Ortema Reclamation, Simic Ramp, and Jund Food in Standard. This is cheaper than a whole load of top tier 
of the standard metagame. Like I said, we're a bit softer to lay down of the void. Our sideboard strategy, because we're now in mono black, is to have something that can interact with, I don't know, graph diggers, cages, or rest in pieces. So we've got Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb is a colorless answer to those effects. Now, Ratchet Bomb taking up to four to blow up a lay down of the void is actually pretty rough, so it's not really a decent answer to lay down of the void. For that reason, we need to have some sort of alternative game plan uh, post board against Leyline or Rip or, or Cage decks, as well as the Ratchet Bomb blow it up and go off after the Ratchet Bomb's gone plan. For that reason, the deck has three pack rats in the sideboard as well. So you can just sideboard into pack rat aggro, relive the days of RTR, mono black devotion, pitching stuff and making big old pack rats. If you're so inclined and you prefer zombies, Crypt Breaker is another option. It's not really much of a different price. The problem with Crypt Breaker that is that it's a one CMC spell. So when you're sideboarding against Chalice of the Void deck, which again is where we bring in pack rat, because Chalice decks often have both Leyline and Chalice of the Void that shut down the majority of our deck, yeah. Having a one mana like alternative game plan to that is not good. The most expensive part of the deck is the Grizzle Brands and the Reanimates themselves. Reanimate is too important, it's a core part of the deck. Lotus Petals are also quite pricey. Grizzle Brand will set you back about $10. And Lotus Petal set you back around 9. That's each. However, the great thing is, both Lotus Petal and Grizzle Brand see plenty of play in other decks in the format. Both of them can be found in Show and Tell, which is a deck that I would love to budgetize for Legacy on a budget in the future. Petals also see play in multiple artifact combo decks, Storm decks. They also see play in Bomberman. And Grizzle Brand also has fringe applications in things like, like Tin Fins and other weird combo decks that I need to do a lol what about at some point. This deck is very, very powerful, slightly soft to both Chalice of the Void and Leyline of the Void, like I said earlier. Cards with Void in the name, really. And I guess one of the problems right now is that those decks are good against the Underworld Breach decks. So that's sort of growing in popularity. The, the, the day that I'm recording this, I'm streaming a Chalice of the Void, a uh, Leyline of the Void deck in the evening. So there are metagames where it will struggle, but... Ultimately, the power level of reanimating Grizzle Brands, Ionas, and stuff like that is so high that you will often really, really blindside people. Death and Taxes decks, for example, they can have a good matchup against you, but this can just go much, much quicker than them. The great thing about having the disruption in the mono black hand disruption effects as well, and the added addition of him to Turok to our mono black version of this deck, is that we can disrupt other people's counter magic, we can rip away Force of Will, Spell Pierce and similar before we go off, or know if the coast is clear. If we Cabal Therapy them and they just reveal a load of white spells and no Caracas, well, it could be a good game. It is also worth noting there is a mono black like reanimated deck in Legacy already, it looks to play Grave Titan as one of its primary reanimation spells, mainly because Grave Titan isn't soft to Caracas, for example, and has ETB value from uh, getting plowed by Swords to Plowshare. But also, you can Dark Ritual out Grave Titans quite easily if your reanimation plan is off the board. Now, I did consider that for this video, but the problem is Grave Titan's actually dearer than Grizzle Brand right now. They set you back around 13 bucks, depending on printing. So the fact that they're dearer than the Grizzle Brand basically put this version of the deck out of the way for me wanting to play in the budget version. And also, although Grave Titan's cool, it's not quite Grizzle Brand. So let's show you what the deck could do. I've got two quite fun games showing you what the deck can do. A ludicrous kind of nut draw from our deck, and then a slower grinding out when the hate is on kind of gameplay. We have lost the die roll. Our opening hand has an unmasked to get a grizzle brand into the bin, and then we can just exhume it on turn one. So I'm going to keep this. If they have force of will, then we're kind of in a bad place. But if they don't have force of will, we're all good. We're all good. So we're going to unmask, targeting ourselves, exiling an animate dead. I want to exhume. Mm -hmm. Animate dead. We put grizzle brand into the graveyard. We then go swamp, lotus petal. Black mana, sack this for black mana, cast zoom, return Grizzlebrand to play. I'm then gonna draw seven cards and see what we find in case we find a way to get a Ashen Rider or similar into play. Okay, we've got an Entomb, a Lotus Petal, and other things. I guess I'm gonna draw seven more cards to see if I can get a Dark Ritual. We did find a Dark Ritual, so we're gonna go Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal. We're then gonna go Crack a Petal for black, Crack a Petal for black. Dark Ritual up to four mana. And then we're gonna go Entomb. Grab a Chancellor of the Annex. We're then gonna animate dead said Chancellor of the Annex. I guess we could have actually got Iona here because we could have got Battle Therapy to see the hand and then chose the color. Um, so Iona could have been an option here, but I mean, I guess Chancellor 
countering all their spells is pretty good. Well, they're gonna cast Cabal Therapy, naming the, the targeting them. We should have Cabal Therapy first, so we knew what Iona to, to, to what color to name with Iona really. Instead, they've gone for the Chancellor. I'm gonna name Swords to Plowshares, and we find Acidic Slime, Caravan Vigil, Lotus Cobra, Wilderness Reclamation. Ah. Huh. Well, looks like the 1v1 rooms are full of absolute nonsense. And of course we discard down a Grizzle Brand and an Ashen Rider. Sometimes I guess people say they're playing Legacy and they're just playing like a collection of their favourite cards from throughout Magic's history. We're about to end this person's whole career. We play a Swamp, we're going to go to combat and attack them. They go to 9. We go back up to 13. We're going to animate dead this Ashen Rider. Oh, I've just realised. They're a Battle of Wits deck. There's 266 cards in their deck. Interesting. GG, they say. Okay, well, yeah, I guess so. Not dissimilarly to Commander, I guess sometimes when you say the word Legacy, people aren't quite on the same wavelength. I would have assumed people were practising their, their, their decks in the Legacy practice rooms. But I guess, yeah, maybe I would play these cards if I was in, if I was playing Battle of Wits in Legacy, which has been a plan for a while. Um, interesting. Our opponent plays a mountain and passes the turn. We attack and we, we kill them. We, we could, like, draw more cards, Dark Witch or some more, but I feel like, I feel like we should just end this game and, and crack on with playing another one. Keep this hand because all we need is some way to put something in the graveyard. So that's drawing a fatty that we can cabal therapy into the bin or drawing it into. Do you want to animate dead, which isn't perfect? By perfect, I mean it isn't good. We'll give him one more turn, and then next time I might be uh, playing Dark Ritual into him plus cabal therapy. I'll probably place Thought Erasure, which is an interesting card to see in a legacy league. They take our him, which is understandable, they're, they're scared of it. And they put a Dryad Arbor into their graveyard at the top of their library. We drew an Unmask, so we can have a look at their hand. Oof, they are some form. They're some form of Nickfit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the Dragonlord Ujitai. I'm then going to cast Dark Ritual. Are they going to Force of Will it? They are not. I'm going to cast Cabal Therapy targeting them. I'm going to name Force of Will that's in their grave in their, in, their, in their hand right now. We get rid of the Force of Will. This leaves them with a Land, a Vet, and a Dovin's Veto. And then we're just going to animate dead their Dragonlord Ujitai. Yep. That's right, we have an Ujitai now, which is uh, not terrible. Our opponent plays a Veteran Explorer and the planes that was in hand. There's one card unknown in hand. We know they got a Dovin's Veto and one other card. We drew a Petal. We hit them with Ujitai, which allows us to anticipate. We find a Putrid Imp, but I'm tempted to take the Duress instead. No, I'm going to put the Putrid Imp into hand. We play an Imp. We play a Petal. I put in hand has two cards in hand that are unknown. And they play a second vet, so there's one unknown card plus a Dovin's Veto. We don't want them to remove our Dragon Lord Ujitai. If they play a um, Pernicious D, that could easily blow up our anime dead and kill our Ujitai as well. So we want to stop that. Maybe Duresses and things like that could be used for that. But in an ultimately video, I want to reanimate something bigger again. We hit them for four again with their own Dragon Lord Ujitai. And we get to look at the top three cards of our library. And we find a Grizzle Brand. We put Grizzle Brand into our hand. If we try to exhum it now, they will definitely, definitely, definitely Dovin's Veto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard Grizzle Brand. I'm going to Cabal Therapy my opponent by sacking my Putrid Imp. I'm going to name Dovin's Veto. This way we'll get rid of Dovin's Veto and we'll also know that the coast is clear for our Grizzle Brand. And they've scooped it up. <laughs> GG Ujitai E. <coughs> We have a hand of only one mana source, so we have to mulligan this. It's a shame, really, because we get to unmask them and then play a pack rat and just make pack rats, it would have been great. We keep this hand, we have multiple swamps, multiple dark rituals, a way to get Grizzle into play, which is a way to discard it or entomb it. They've played a Ley Nine of the Void, so maybe we're just going to hard cast a Grizzle Brand this game. We play a swamp and pass back to our opponent. If we get Thought Erasure next turn, it'll be a shame, but I mean, I don't want to fire off my Dark Rituals to, to him them when the Dark Rituals are going to allow us to cast Grizzlebrand eventually. We him them. The problem with Leyline with this version of the deck is that we don't have access to the sideboard cards that can destroy it. There is Ratchet Bomb, but instead I've decided to rely upon uh, Pack Rat as an alternative, or just hard casting Grizzlebrand off of the mana. Yeah, Leyline is rough. Rest in Peace is less rough, because Rest in Peace is easy to blow up with Ratchet Bomb. Perhaps we should bring Ratchet Bomb in against this deck. It's hard to say. Veteran Explorer from our opponent. If they give us a little lands, Grizzlebrand gets a lot easier to cast. We play a Putrid Imp. They play a Dryad R, but if they attack, I'm probably just blocking here to get the, the swamps out of our deck and to enable Grizzlebrand. Veteran Explorer dies. We get two swamps. They get a mountain and an island. Now, we want to draw Unmask or Thoughtsies or Duress or something so we can check for... Well, it's close to being able to check for a, check for a uh, force of will. We play a pack rat. It resolves. 
Pack Rat Resolving suggests they either have removal for Pack Rat or they don't have counter magic. One of the two. Vista from our opponent. They crack both the Vista and the Misty here. This is six mana, so this isn't great. <laughs> Niv Mizzet Reborn. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> wow. Now I understand the thought of Asia. This is sick. I am into this. What do they get out of this? So they get Ice Fanker Rattle, Ice f of each guild colour, right? So they get another Niv Mizzet, a Thought Erasure, and Ice Fanker Rattle. I'm going to hard cast Quizzle Brand this turn and hope it's enough. Bearing in mind the Ice Fanker Rattle will have Death Touch, so that's a problem. Okay, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Force of Negation. Okay. <laughs> and they pitch the Thought Erasure to it, so they've got Ice Fanker Rattles in play in hand. I guess we're just going to start ditching things to Pack Rat then. There's just no way we don't do that. Discard a Grizzle Brand. Discard. Reanimate. And then if they attack with the Niv Mizzet, we get to just slam back for a lot of Pack Rats. Now they have at least one Ice Fang Coatl in hand, which can block one of the rats. There it is. If our swamps were, were snow covered, by the way, Reanimate a Coatl would allow you to have a death touching cantripping blocker. Now. That would increase the budget of the deck because snow-covered lands cost more than normal lands, but it's almost strictly no downside for playing snow-covered swamps in our deck. Okay, we drew a swamp. We're going to just hold that for uh, for pack rat value. We're going to attack with all our creatures here. Multiple blocks. We're then going to discard a swamp. And then in our second main phase, we're going to animate that coattle. It'll draw us a card. It'll make a blocker against the Niv Mizzet. There we go. Draw a card. Feels good. Feels good. Every card we draw is basically just another pack rat. They don't attack with the Niv Mizzet. Interesting. We draw an Entomb, which is just going to be another pack rat. That's just what it's going to be. I don't think attacking here and losing a rat is correct. So I'm going to wait until we've got two more rats in play before I swing. Or ideally we can get our rats so big that Niv Mizzet can't deal with them. An attack from our opponent. We're going to block with our zero one one flyer. We are going to get blown out hard if they are splashing black for the normal tech in the Veteran Explorer decks, which is a uh, good old pernicious deed. Tyrant Scorn, return if miss it to your hand, eh? Okay. Cast it again for value. Oh, oh this deck is hot. Ten cards out of the revealed zone. What do we find? They got a Dak. Not terrible. It's just Dak, though. We drew another Entomb. This time we are going to attack, because we are presenting a lot of damage. So we make a rat, hit them for 10, taking them to 3. We're going to use the Vets ability and get some more swamps out of our deck. This is going to just make our pack rats better, because at the moment we were on 5, so we couldn't double pack rat there. We're now on 7 lands. I don't know how many more basics they've got. They've got more basics. Jeez. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I guess if they're 5 cards, they need to play at least 1 of each basic. 2 of the more prominent ones. In this case, green, perhaps black, or blue as well. Uh, we have lethal on board. Easily. Easily. What a fun game of magic. People say that Legacy is not very interesting or too fast, but as you can see, sometimes you have games like this. This is fun. Veteran Explorer does nothing but enable fun strategies. Astrolabe from our opponent. Dak discarded Force of Rome Cabal Therapy. The other thing about Pack Rat, although it's bad against Pernicious Deed, which just looks like this version of the deck is not playing. This version of Nick Pit is not playing. Uh, Pernicious Deed, it's it's, it's great against Force of Will because we're never casting any more spells. And we win. We win. Uh, <laughs> that was a pretty fun game of magic. So as you can see, the deck is powerful. It can fight through hate and counter magic. And if your opponent's playing uh, ba Battle of Wits and has no interaction, you just get to go ham. And that's the thing. I know some of you might be thinking, well, that first deck was definitely not meta. And the second one was less meta in terms of what Legacy is about. But... Legacy is a wide open format, and that second deck was a blue counter spell deck, which is one of the primary, the blue pile decks, which I'll come to in an episode this later down the line. There's a lot of that stuff going on with Force of Wills, Dovin's Vetoes, and Spell Pierces, so that was a good example of those kinds of decks. The first one was more comparable to the fair decks in Legacy, the stuff I like to play a lot on. Maverick, Death and Taxes, arguably the prison deck. Sometimes they just can't do anything because they have a handful of like spells that enact their game plan, but it's too slow and doesn't interact with your unfair game plan. That's the theory, right? The unfair decks beat the fair decks, and then Force of Will polices the unfair decks while the fair decks can beat up and Force of Will. That's kind of meant to be the, the circular logic of Legacy. The interesting part is that this deck, and Red Black Animators always have this problem, or I say problem power, is that it can kind of fuck up both of them. So I turn it over to you. What do you think of this deck? 
Does it excite you? Do you think you'll give it a shot? What do you think of this series? What do you think of the way I've laid out the information? Do you think $300 is budget enough? I would love to hear feedback on all these things from you. And don't forget, if you're looking to get into Legacy with your friends, at your local store, your local playgroup, you want to put on a small tournament, don't worry about proxying things. No one's going to really care. The important thing is that you're playing Magic. Slowly build up the decks, so you can play them at Magic Fests and things like that. But in the meantime, just scribble the word Grizzle Brand on the back of a forest and sleeve that up and use that as your Grizzle Brand whilst you procure the cards. One of the fun things about trading card games is trading up and building into the things you want to play. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope this video has been interesting. I hope this gave you a glimmer of hope that you can get into this wonderful format that is currently restricted by some dumb old promise that was made to investors like hundreds and hundreds of years ago. By hundreds, I mean it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Ta-ta for now.